A couple of weeks ago, I was at an eighth grade graduation, and a 13-year-old girl took the stage and told her peers that were gathered there, if we are going to have a future, we need to collectively act. And she used the word if. We're facing more complicated and interconnected problems than ever before. Food insecurity, climate change, food um, social and financial inequality. We absolutely need the global brain trust on these problems, and we need the practice and the ethos of open. But is it going to be enough? Can we make change of the magnitude we need when there are millions sitting on the sidelines? It's time to really examine how far can decentralized contribution go. Can, can we somehow supercharge it so that we're getting millions, activating millions from the sidelines to contribute their time and their ideas and their labor. Well, first, we have to deal with the fact that the populations, those millions, are very, very distracted. We all are. We are doing more, and the noise and the pressure are greater than ever. I feel this a lot. Do you feel this in your lives? There's a professor from Harvard that studies the economics of attention, and he's found that the cost of our attention has risen seven to ninefold in just a few decades. That's greater than the cost and the increase in inflation and in health care. So we may know what's right, and we may want to contribute, but it's a very different thing from actually doing it, and that does not make us bad. It's simply human. So how do you pull somebody out from that and get them to not only pay attention, but to take action? Conceptually, it's very simple. Incentives, right? Incentives are chemical. They're algorithmic. If you change the incentives, you change the action. Social scientists have reams of studies that back this up. But here's the deal. This is how many minutes we have in a day, 1,440. And we all do. I do. Everyone in the front row, all the way to the back corner, all the many thousands of us have this many minutes in a day. So what drives the decision to contribute some of those minutes to an open source project versus another? Well, it may be you're funded by an employer, or it may be altruism, or maybe you're just trying to solve a problem. But regardless, these incentives are not one size fits all. They are not universal. So what if we could create design incentives that actually were powerful and universal? What would they look like and where would we get them? This is where I bring up the blockchain part. And this may be, feel like a leap for some of you, may surprise you. But blockchains are, have multi-function, multi-use tool, right? And entrepreneurs are using them to design all kinds of things. One of those things is to, as, as plumbing for designing incentives. So let's think about this for a while. The first blockchain was created to make Bitcoin possible. And Bitcoin's a digital currency, but it has an ingenious dual role. And that is that using game theory, it also is used to shape behavior. In Bitcoin's case, that is to incent the maintenance and the protection of the network. There are projects that are seeking to do something similar using digital tokens. Right? And they're using these to shape behavior of all kinds. It's almost, you can imagine it as like a virtual currency that's broken out of the game and is used to reward behavior in real life. Things that matter, actions that matter, and you can do it at scale. And these tokens have really interesting attributes. You can essentially tag and register a contribution. You can track it over time, and you can reward it, and you can even because you have a blockchain recording it, you can even see impact over time with relatively high fidelity, very high fidelity. There's another aspect, and that is that the more that join in to the, to the, the cause of the network, the more, the, the more valuable the token. It gets the flywheel of change moving, and it aligns incentives. So it's almost as if everyone has skins in the game. And this is why. Some people call blockchains incentive machines.